What's up, everybody? Welcome to Among the Fence. My name is Aaron. Today, we're checking out the new album, You Won't Go Before You're Supposed to, by the Kentuckian metalcore or hardcore band Knock Loose. These guys have been around for about 11 years, and they do have a hardcore following, but they didn't really blow up until they played at Coachella to a crowd that didn't really know what to do during a breakdown. It was great to see a hardcore band get accepted by people who were mostly there to see Frank Ocean and Bad Bunny. And I've always liked the instrumentation that Knock Loose brings, but Brian Garris has some super high vocals. It took me a while to get into them. Uh, I've referred to them as just screeches. I've seen people refer to his vocals as hardcore SpongeBob, which is pretty funny. But they have definitely grown on me a lot, especially after doing a review on the 2014 Pop Culture EP, which was the very first EP that they released, and a Tear in the Fabric of Life EP, which was the last release that we got from them. Before that, I did listen to the previous album's laugh tracks and A Different Shade of Blue, and I honestly couldn't stand them. Uh, going back and listening to them after the band has grown on me a little bit more, I absolutely love the songs. A Tear in the Fabric of Life is still just my favorite thing that they have released. The singles that they started dropping for You Won't Go Before You're Supposed To still have that same kind of flair. So, I mean, I guess it's kind of easy to do for a band that doesn't really change their sound all that much. A Blinding Faith was the first single that they released, touching on the hypocrisy of religious people who I believe Brian Garris has personally experienced. I believe that these are on actual people, not just, you know, people like just a generalization of religious people, but people that have actually affected his life who he sees as being very horrible people who lie and they're not really all that great, but they believe that they are perfect or better than everybody else just because they go to church on Sundays. The intro is intensely heavy and right in your face as you would expect. Isaac Hall, the guitarist, lends his super deep guttural growls, which really accent Brian's vocals very well. The bridge between verse one and verse two is heavy with an addicting groove. And of course, the breakdown brings you to your knees and the outro is just ridiculous. And they followed this up with the next single, Don't Reach For Me, which has some of the most chaotic drum sections I've heard from this band. And it also continues basically telling the stories about his abuse and the trauma he has received from religious people who have basically condemned him. I'm assuming it's kind of like family members or close friends. And I absolutely love when the music drops out and it's just the drums, a fat bass line, and Brian vocals sandwiched between two breakdowns. The second one being full of scratchy guitarists, which sounds so good. The chorus is fantastic. It's very haunting and passionate. You can really feel the emotion. Then we have the third and final single to follow this one up. It's got the same kind of sound to it. It is titled Suffocate. It features Poppy. I gotta say I was really hesitant to listen to this song before the whole album dropped because I'm not really that much into singles anyways. I didn't want to go into this album disliking the single. Um, I just wanted to hear it in its context. Uh, it was actually Poppy's idea. She sent over a suggestion saying, hey, we should make a song together. And it was after the album was already finished. So the guys got together and they decided to write a completely separate song from the album just specifically for this. They wanted to make it as heavy as possible. They said that they actually wrote this song just sitting at a computer, just kind of figuring it out, which is not usually how they do it. This one is about being stabbed in the back. It has a beautiful riff and blast beats in the verse. Verse two features Poppy. And like I said before, I was pretty skeptical, but she absolutely understood the assignment. Her screamy vocals fit right in with the rest of the music, and her clean set up the breakdown very well. It's a lot better than I could have imagined. In fact, this is one of my favorite Knock Loose songs. And given how good these singles are, nothing sets up this album better than the opening track, Thirst, which is just a bunch of chaos. The drums, the guitar, the bass, is bas they're basically all doing their own thing and they're all over the place it's just like a minute and 47 second breakdown and just pure nonsense piece by piece has one of my favorite riffs on this album in the intro the whispered vocals in the chorus is creepy and it makes it feel very dark i couldn't get enough of it especially with how groovy the post chorus is and i love the lyrics and how well they communicate what i'm assuming to be depression from past trauma then we have the song moss covers all which seems to continue this theme in a very short 46 second song which is again another really insanely heavy breakdown with all three band members screaming in the end 
Take Me Home has a very heavy atmosphere with Isaac's vocals in the verse and Brian's vocals in the chorus, changing it up a little bit. It has a really menacing guitar part as well. It's barely over two minutes long, but honestly, it feels a lot quicker and it definitely leaves you wanting more. Slaughterhouse 2 is the only other song on this album to have a feature from Chris Motionless popping up all throughout this song and the opening riff on this is absolutely dynamic i love it so much and the dual vocals sound so good from the chorus the drums also have a lot of shiny moments and verse two has just chris motionless i gotta say he's not my favorite vocalist but he does add a lot to this song bringing in just a different vocal tone and musically this song feels the heaviest to me out of all of the other tracks then we have the song the calm that keeps you awake comes directly after it has a very a uh, new metal corn vibe in the intro. It doesn't take long for it to get really hardcore though. The pre-chorus is slow and heavy and then that intro groove comes back in in the chorus and it just hits so good. Sit and Mourn is the closing track of this album. It is the longest at being just under five minutes and it is also very dark. It has a strong focus on huge chords and just the overall atmosphere. This isn't a riff or vocal, this is all just about the atmosphere. Uh, the vocals and the drum isolation in the verse is super intense, very in your face, makes you a little uncomfortable. It builds up into some very emotional, heavy sections, finishing off with a beautiful minute and a half long outro. It just makes for a great closer. This has probably gotta be one of the musically just deepest emotionally heavy tracks that knocked loose has ever made i believe i could be wrong but this one it, it's just so good i mean the melancholy feel of this whole thing really sums up this whole album and past trauma and depression and just trying to heal from all of that I absolutely love this album, but at times I gotta say the vocals did become a little too much. Brian Garris, I mean, he just, it, it's still, it's still something that I'm working through, but it's not something that I really find to be a fault with this band. I mean, it's just, it's just who they are. It's what they do. I still absolutely loved it all the way through. The music was top tier. Uh, it's a shorter album for sure. This is probably the shortest album they've ever released. People are saying it's more like an EP than anything else, but I feel like they really get their point across. Uh, it's not bloated. This album feels like something you can listen to multiple times back to back because of how short and quick it is and how a lot of the riffs and just overall musical passages just leave you wanting more. Even though they stay in their own lane. I gotta say, they definitely feel very fresh in this. It sounds like they're bringing something new and the themes are very personal yet also very relatable. They just did a great job at writing this. It's been a long time since they've released anything and you could tell that they've been working really hard on coming out with something that means a lot to them and you could tell that they just enjoyed making it. So with all that said, I gotta give You Won't Go Before You're Supposed To by Knocked Loose a 8.6 out of 10. But I want to know what you guys think. I have a feeling this album is going to be pretty loved, especially by people who already like Knock Loose. For those of you who feel like Brian is a hardcore SpongeBob vocalist, uh, maybe not so much because it is very, it, it's kind of rough. Even for me who I didn't like it, now I did. It still, it still becomes a little tough at times. So leave a comment below letting me know what you thought of You Won't Go Before You're Supposed To. Let me know what you would rate it and what your favorite song is. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. If you want to help support me even further than that, please feel free to subscribe and ring the bell icon. That way you don't miss out on any of my videos. And let me know what you want me to do a review on next. Doing any of those things helps me out tremendously. I appreciate it so much. Thank you guys for taking time out of your day to listen to me sit here and talk about music. And I hope you have a good rest of your day or night whenever you happen to be watching this. And I will talk to you guys next time.